Border Patrol agents continued to report record high illegal immigration encounters and a spike in the amount of illegal fentanyl seized on the border. President Biden and Mexico's president have just pledged billions of dollars for border infrastructure. Here's NTD's Melina Wisecup with the details. 240,000 illegal encounters last reported in May is the highest number ever recorded. Senate Republicans today providing details from a report they released on the unprecedented surge and highlighting what they're calling the humanitarian crisis now unfolding. Little boys and little girls who've been physically assaulted, who've been sexually assaulted. There's nothing compassionate about luring people into a trip where rapists and murderers and the worst human beings on the planet get their clutches into them. The group is unveiling a bill to address the issue, including extending Title 42 to quickly expel illegal immigrants, resuming border wall construction, and making remain in Mexico permanent. But they tell us they're clear-eyed that their solutions won't be realized until they have control of Congress. We're not naive. Uh, that probably is not likely. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, times when there's uh, different numbers in each of the houses. But even then, President Biden could veto any Republican-led legislation that reaches his desk. The president has other ideas in mind. Focused on rebuilding a solid framework of U.S.-Mexican relations. After meeting at the White House Tuesday, Biden and Mexico's president together pledged $5 billion for border infrastructure, $3.4 billion from the U.S. and $1.5 billion from Mexico. The president has also pledged to double the number of work visas for Central American immigrants. But other than this, we haven't seen any comprehensive plan from the White House or here in Congress that's able to pass regarding immigration reform or getting illegal immigration under control. I'm wondering if you guys are working on anything to deal with those issues. Whether it's work permits, a fix for DACA, uh, and a path to citizenship, those are things uh, that we strongly stand for. Um, but reforming our asylum process uh, and making it uh, easier for folks um, to claim asylum uh, is something that is a, a thoughtful approach and, and something that we need to consider as well. Molina, where does Congress stand on creating or working on laws to ramp up border security or immigration reform as a whole? Well, Steve, right now there is no comprehensive immigration plan that is being considered from lawmakers here in Congress. There still seems to be much partisan divide on this issue. So we heard from House Democrats today who are pointing fingers at Republicans saying they're creating obstacles to passing any bipartisan solution on immigration. And then later we heard from House Republicans who say that first they need to secure the border, and that's the main issue, which most of the time Democrats won't go for. But it seems like any time lawmakers are uh, proposing any sort of bill, they're so large that there's at least one or a dozen poison pills in those bills that the other party can't agree on. So since Congress will not pass any smaller bills to address the issues where they actually agree on, it seems that this immigration issue is stalled here in Congress. There was a bipartisan immigration bill introduced over on the Senate side, but that has not moved forward because it doesn't seem like there's much appetite from congressional leadership to get that moving. So as for now, um, it seems both parties are aware that the immigration issue is something they need to deal with, but there's so much partisan divide that they're not able to get anything done so far here in Congress. Steve, back to you. The U.S. is trying to build stronger ties with Pacific Island nations. This is in response to China's growing influence in the region. The Chinese regime wants to sign a security and trade agreement ahead of a push for a possible military base. Vice President Kamala Harris spoke virtually to the Pacific Islands Forum, which is meeting in Fiji. Harris said the U.S. plans to open two new embassies in the Pacific Island nations. She also acknowledged the strategic importance of the region to U.S. interests. We recognize that in recent years, the Pacific Islands may not have received the diplomatic attention and support that you deserve. So today I am here to tell you directly, we are going to change that. The vice president also announced the White House's plans in the region. This includes tripling the annual funding for Pacific Island fisheries to $60 million for the next 10 years, appointing a U.S. envoy to the Pacific Islands Forum, and designing an official U.S. strategy on the Pacific Islands. Former senior Trump advisor John Bolton says he helped plan government coups in foreign countries and that January 6th was not an attempted coup by former President Trump. Bolton made the comments to CNN after yesterday's January 6th committee hearing. 
He was disagreeing with one of the committee's claims based on his own experience in toppling governments. One doesn't have to be brilliant to attempt a coup. Uh, I disagree with that. As somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat, yeah. not here, but you know, other places, uh, it takes a lot of work. And that's not what he did. It was just stumbling around from one idea to another. Bolton did not give details when CNN asked which coups he had helped plan. But he did mention Venezuela as an example of how hard it is to attempt a coup. Bolton also said that he doesn't think Trump was trying to overthrow the Constitution on January 6th, but instead was trying to buy more time to throw the election matter back to the states. It is worth noting that Bolton and Trump had a tumultuous falling out upon his departing the White House, as the two did not see eye to eye over many issues. A House panel held a hearing on the impact the reversal of Roe v. Wade would have on abortion access. The hearing focused on states that have or are expected to ban abortion. The Oversight Committee chairwoman expressed her disappointment with the court's decision. Now the Supreme Court has bulldozed straight through our rights with this extreme, dangerous, and undemocratic decision. Republicans pointed out that the court simply turned abortion decisions over to the states. Congressman Andrew Clyde said voters in each state could decide on candidates that support their views on abortion. He asked the Republicans only witness Erin Hawley, senior counsel of a religious freedom organization, if she agreed. Hawley also, wife to Senator Josh Hawley, agreed with Clyde. She also said the House Democrats' bill to codify Roe was extreme, calling it the abortion on demand through all nine months of pregnancy bill. The Senate Judiciary Committee held a similar hearing Tuesday. Summer travelers are facing mounting flight cancellations, delays, and other chaos at airports across the world. Kenneth Quinn is a former chief counsel of the Federal Aviation Administration. He says that behind the mass travel disruptions is a staffing issue plaguing the entire aviation industry. There are shortages throughout the entire system, uh, from air traffic control to pilots to baggage handlers to ticket agents to you name it, uh, including TSA and the pre-check system. So the shortage is real. One of the problems with uh, the controllers is that they're letting them go for 10 days after they test positive for COVID, where CDC is letting them, you know, instructions to come back after five days. Quinn says the FAA has a staffing crisis and they need to take the blame for making the situation worse. He says he thinks the Secretary of Transportation and the FAA administrator need to be focused on the issue. An airline trade group said last month that U.S. airlines have cut about 15 percent of planned summer flights. Quinn says this is going to be a very difficult time for air travel and that the situation will probably get worse before it gets better.